Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about why the pilots always rev up their engines and then let it stabilize a little bit before they hit toga and set takeoff thrust during the takeoff roll. Uh, it's a slightly shorter video today because I am on annual leave, but I think you're going to like it. Right guys, so I'm sure that all of you who's been out flying at one point or another have noticed that the, uh, the um, pilots, once they line up on the runway, they don't set the thrust to full thrust immediately. They kind of rev the engines up a little bit and then it stays at that um, um, RPM for a little while and then the engines start you know, revving up to full thrust and you start rolling down the runway. Why is this? Um, this is actually, if you've been following my videos, especially about engine failures and also a little bit about the video that I did last week about the uh, why we have uh, dorsal fins on the 737. The reason for us doing this is similar to those reasons, okay? And it has to do with asymmetrical thrust. Now, big turbofan gen engines, um, they have a tendency to accelerate at slightly different rates. It depends a little bit about different things, you know, engines or individuals, but it's only in the first part of the acceleration of the engines that you will notice a difference. From about 40% um, N1 and up, they are almost instantaneous. There's no difference, okay? And that's because the energy of the fans have already built up to a very high level at that um, at that point. But if the engines were to go from about 20% or so where they are normally when we're taxiing up to 95% where we might be or 92% where we might have it for, for, for takeoff. If you were to do that immediately, well then the one engine that is quicker to accelerate might reach 92%, let's say, about a second or two uh, before it does it on the other side, okay? And that's not something we want because, as I was mentioning in the video that I la did last week, a, the effectiveness of the rudder, the aerodynamic effectiveness of the rudder, is not really there until we passed about 80 knots, okay? Prior to that, um, the nose wheel steering is more effective. But this means that if we were to set takeoff thrust, um, and one engine would go up to full takeoff thrust, and the other one would take a little bit longer, well then we would stand there at almost no speed, with full thrust on one engine, and only about half thrust on one engine. Okay, we're talking about a very short while here, but it might be long enough for the aircraft to suddenly yaw and yaw towards the side of the runway. Uh, most likely the, uh, the pilot would be quick enough to, to counteract this, but if the runway is slippery, for example, it can be a huge problem and it definitely wouldn't be nice for you guys. So the way that we solve this is that we rev the engines up to about 40%. Because at 40%, then there's so much energy in the fans that they will be accelerating at almost an identical pace from then, then on. So we rev them up to 40. Takes uh, a couple of seconds to get there. The pilot monitoring will check that they're both equal and say stabilized. And only after I, as pilot flying here, stabilized, then I will put the toga, the take off and go around button and advance the thrust to the takeoff thrust. That way I know that providing everything goes as planned, I will have symmetrical thrust when I'm taking off. Perfect, so if you're ready, we are at 279, 279 and timing. Stabilized. Set takeoff thrust.
leg of cross set in the case of normal. Now, you might come into situations, especially during the winter, where the uh, engines are being run up to 40% first, and then the engine keeps accelerating up to about 70%. The engines stay there, the aircraft is still standing on the brakes, you'll feel the whole aircraft shuddering like this, and it stays like that for up to 30 seconds. Now, what you're experiencing then is uh, an ice shedding technique. Okay? This is something that we do in case of icing outside to make sure that there's no ice that has built up on the fan blades of the engine. And any ice that might have built up during the taxi out is being shed off before we start rolling down the runway. Because at 70%, the centrifugal forces um, that would be subjecting on the ice that has been built up would be so high that the ice would just shed off the, the fan blades. So this is something that we tend to do um, during winter operations when it is um, high likelihood of fan blade icing. Like for example, um, super cold, super cooled raindrops outside or freezing fog. So if you, if you ever feel that, I know that it will probably feel a bit scary because the aircraft is kind of shuddering and, and stuff, but we do that to get rid of the ice and as soon as those 30 seconds are out or even sometimes if it's light we might only do this for a couple of seconds okay then we will push toga and the aircraft will start hurling down the runway to go for takeoff but these are the two different types of run-ups that you will probably come across and that's the reason for them Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you like this shorter one. Make sure that you have um, come in and join me in my website, by the way, mentorpilot.com. Um, on mentorpilot.com, I will be doing blog posts that are slightly more serious than the subjects that I take up here in the channel. Uh, and also, I am starting to feature flight schools in there, flight schools that I have checked out personally that I know keeps a good standard. Uh, that I can guarantee to you guys. They might not be the cheapest flight schools, but I know that they will be giving good quality training to you guys if you need it. So go in there, check it out. There's a uh, chat in there as well. And if you haven't already, I really hope that you have joined me in my app, Mentor Aviation. There are links to both the website and the mobile app down here. The app is completely for free, so check it out. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.